Hey everyone, welcome back and let's write some more neat code today. As you can see, I'm not in my normal uh, place. I'm not at home right now, so unfortunately I'm going to have to record this on my laptop. I'm not going to be able to draw through this problem, but I think that this is one of the problems that probably wouldn't need too much drawing. I hope that maybe like just in this like text editor, I'll kind of be able to go through the examples and then lead you to the optimal solution. So Today we're solving construct smallest number from di string. The idea is that we are given a string of characters that are only going to contain uppercase i and uppercase d. So in this case, i means increasing, d means decreasing. And so the thing here is that we're given a string called pattern. And the constraint is that the max length of this string is going to be 8. And that's very important because what we're trying to do is given this string, we want to actually create another string of numbers. I think I can probably kind of write it out here on the right side. Take the very simple example where let's say we have three eyes. Well, first of all, if we have three uh, characters, then we're going to have four uh, numbers in the output such that for every one of these like characters, if it's I, then the two adjacent characters, the first two adjacent characters have to be strictly increasing. And they basically imply that over here on the left side with this bullet point. And as you can imagine, D is going to be the opposite where they're, uh, the numbers are going to be in decreasing order. So this is what I mean. Like, for example, let's say we started with one, then the next number uh, has to be strictly increasing. Let's make it a two. And then so now we see another I character. So now we know, okay, so this number and the next number have to be in increasing order as well. Let's set it to three. And then again, let's go forward. It's an I again. Let's set it to four. Now let's change the example a bit. Maybe the last character was a D. So that means it would have had to be in decreasing order. This number that we're creating in the form of like a string is not satisfying what we have up above. The first two characters are technically satisfied with these numbers, but the last one isn't. It has to be in decreasing order. So what we could do is uh, make it go in decreasing order. So now uh, the number could be two, for example. Now, this might look good to you, but actually we skipped over the first constraint, which tells us that the numbers have to be between one through nine, where each digit is used at most once. We don't have to use every digit, but we can only use each digit at most once. So that tells us that the max output of the string of numbers can be nine. And that does make sense because like I said at the beginning, the pattern string is only going to be up to eight characters long. Okay, but back to this uh, constraint over here, we sort of violated it because we needed a number that is smaller than three to come after it. But we already used two here on the left side. We can't reuse two. Okay, then maybe try one. Well, can't use one either. Okay, maybe try zero. Well, zero is not a valid number. So we sort of almost have to backtrack from our solution now. So the first number that we started with uh, can't be one, I guess. Well, let's start at um, maybe a four. And then the next number can be five. The next number can be six. And then the last number has to be less than six. And we can't reuse any numbers we've used before. Let's uh, make it a three. So now we do have a number that satisfies all of these constraints. But the last thing I didn't mention is that actually the result that we want to return isn't just a valid result. We want to return the lexicographically smallest string. So basically like an alphabetical order or like numerically, the if you were to convert the string into an actual number, it should be the smallest number. So is there a different thing that we could have done? Well, at this point, it kind of seems intuitive that all we really care about is the starting point, at least to some extent. But the problem is we don't really know what starting point to choose until we've actually gone through potentially the entire string. So that's kind of the problem. How do you do that? Well, let's just kind of finish up this example for now, but maybe kind of have that thought cooking in the back of your mind. So for this example, the next thing you might try is, okay, it didn't work starting with one. Maybe we can start with two and then we can go to three and then we can go to four. And then to find a value less than this, we don't have to pick three or two. We could pick one. And technically this one is valid, but actually there is a smaller string that we could create and we could do so starting at one. Uh, watch this. I can do one. I'll uh, do it right below this string just so you can still kind of see it. So I start with one, then I go up to two. And then instead of going up to three, where then I wouldn't have anything smaller than three, I can actually skip three and then I can go to four. 
And now after the four, I do have a number that is smaller than four, which is three. So I, I, in a sense, we're almost being greedy. We're almost being greedy. Um, and, and just to give you like a small little hint, there's gonna be uh, a greedy component to this algorithm, but there's also gonna be a data structure involved, a data structure that can conveniently detect something, can detect the D. We know how important the D is, and when you can kind of detect that, then we can, in a sense, start going in decreasing order. But again, the problem is, how do you choose the starting point? Well, before we go any further in kind of discussing like the optimal solution and getting closer to that solution, I want to mention that given that like we, we know the constraints are pretty small, the string is going to be pretty short. It's never going to be bigger than eight. So even a brute force solution to this problem should work pretty well. The problem is that you might try like a brute force solution of like starting at one, and if that doesn't work, starting at two. If that doesn't work, starting at three. And unfortunately, I don't know if there is like an n-squared solution. Maybe there is like a really clever one. But I don't think it's probably trivial. Like the actual brute force solution would involve like a decision tree, would involve some like recursion and stuff like that. So uh, that, that's why I'm not really going too far into the brute force solution. So I'm adding this in um, after recording the full video because I kind of glossed over one point that is really, really important. Do you notice something that obviously like if there's six characters in the input, there's going to be seven characters in the output. But do you also notice that if there are six characters in the input, then the seven characters in the output are always going to be including one through seven because we want to make it lexicographically like the smallest. So there's never going to be a reason to include eight. We should always be able to arrange one through seven in such a way where there are increasing, decreasing, increasing. But let's keep going with some of these examples because it's really interesting to me. Because when I say greedy, you might not have understood what I meant by that. What I mean is, let's let's say we have a string and it starts with some eyes. Well, we can probably almost always start with one. And I think if the string is starting with I, we can pretty much, ever, not pretty much, we can 100% of the time always start with one because we can do this one and then two and then a three and sorry i'm not uh, drawing this correctly because we know that uh, the numbers kind of go like uh, on the edges of the characters but so then after that we get four after that we get five well now you might think like what if we made a wrong decision somewhere around here we were trying to be greedy because we started with the smallest possible number because we're trying to create the smallest possible string and every time we saw an i we just took the previous number and incremented it by one so now what, what's going to happen well let's say now we do start encountering some d's i see a d another d and then another d and another example before i forget i want to go through is going to be something probably like this where it does start with a d and maybe it just keeps kind of going down let's compare how this would work compared to something like this well right now we ran into the same issue that we ran into with the example up here that now if we try to choose a number less than five well there aren't really any available to us maybe that tells us that we can't exactly start at one that every time we see a character that's when we choose a number so if i saw the first eye i pick uh, one here. I see another I, I put two here. I see another I, I put three. I see another I, I put four. I see a D now. So before I choose a five for this spot, now that I see that there's a D character, I have to put something here. Or do I actually have to put something? Because again, we can't predict the future. If uh, we have this string with a bunch of Ds coming after, I think the smallest number we would have is going to be eight, seven, six, five, and then uh, four, or, sorry, I think I messed up. I should have put a nine here and then we would have had uh, the rest. Again, we can't really pick this number until we've seen everything that comes after it. But what if the characters that came after it were different? What if there were three eyes instead? Well, do you think like the number of characters that came after is related? Like we saw when there were four Ds, then we had to pick a, a number such that there were four numbers less than that one. When there's just a single D, maybe then we just have to pick a number where there's only one number less than that one. And then let's do that. Let's do six and then five is less than that. And now for the numbers that come after in increasing order, they just have to be larger than everything we've seen so far. And we can do that seven, eight, nine. So now I just wanna to mention to you because it's not super clear, it's not easy to kind of arrive at like the intuition for this, that this is a stack problem. Now, start thinking about the things that I just kind of mentioned. How could you have used a stack to do this? It looks like the eyes 
make it pretty straightforward. When we see an I, we can kind of just put a number there and then just fill them in. When there's a D, then we kind of have to start reversing the order of those numbers, but those numbers are still the same. It's still like a six and a five. It was just this portion of the output was in reversed order. And that makes sense when you look at like an example like this one where we have four Ds. Well, then we're gonna have something like this. Five, uh, four, three, two, one. How could you have done something like this with a stack? Well, if we did have a stack, and again, we were trying to be greedy, we just start with one. Let's say we put one onto the stack when we see the first D. And then uh, we put another number and we just kind of keep going one, two, three, four, five consecutively. And, and why did we have a five? Well, we need to have at least one more even after the entire string ends. So let's remember to iterate n plus one times. And let's say this was the state of our stack as we went through this input. Well, at the end, then we can take everything in our stack, start popping them, which will give us the reversal of this uh, like input that we're looking for. And then we can then start populating the result. Five will go first, four will go next, three will go after that, and then two, and then one. Now, how would the stack work on like the opposite string where we have, let's say some eyes for something like this, we know the output is going to be one, two, three, four. So what would the stack look like? Well, when we see the first eye, let's put one onto the stack. Now, uh, if we're doing this with a stack, we already know that the next value has to be one. Like in the output, the first value has to be one. So we should never push something onto our stack because we know stacks are last in, first out. We would never want the two to come before the one as these are going in increasing order. So once we see the first I character, yes, we'll put a number onto the stack, but then we're gonna pop it immediately and then add it to the output. The way we're gonna iterate over the input, we're gonna take the length of the input and we're gonna iterate n plus one times. We're gonna have i iterate from one to n plus one. I think now I'm probably ready to code this up. So I'll leave some of those examples up just so you can kind of see them, but we're gonna have a couple things here. We're gonna have the result and we're gonna have the stack, which is also gonna be an array. And then we're gonna do this. We're gonna start iterating in sort of a greedy way. We're gonna have i going from one to uh, the length of pattern plus one. Notice how we didn't even look at the current character that we are at. And I think uh, I probably want I to be the index of like the pattern string. So I'm actually gonna update this to uh, not start at one and actually start at zero. And I think we still wanna iterate this number of times. So I was probably incorrect in my previous wording. Uh, but so now that we're actually starting at zero and going up until like the length of the pattern, we could probably just change this uh, plus one to give it like the offset. And then what we're going to do is we're actually now going to look at the character at index i. So we're going to say this, if pattern at index i is equal to the uppercase i character, then what we want to do is pop from our stack and then whatever value we pop to the stack, add it to the result. And that's pretty much it. But the problem is, what do you think this is gonna be? An if statement or a loop? It has to be a loop. Let me kind of show you the example up here. So uh, with, with the first three I's, it's pretty straightforward what's gonna happen. Uh, but let's change that to like three D's and then an I that comes after it. Well, this is what the output is gonna look like. Four, three, two, one, and then five. This is the dry run. When we see the first D, we're gonna add one to the stack. When we see the second D, we're gonna add two. The third D, add three. The fourth a character, which is an I, we're gonna add four. And then since we saw the I, now we're gonna start popping everything from the stack. We're gonna populate the result, four, three, two, one. And then we're gonna iterate one more time because we have to, like even after the string ends. And at that point, our stack will be empty and then we'll have a five. And since we reached the end of the string at that point, we're still gonna pop from the stack anyway, whatever happens to be left over. And we're gonna end up popping the five. So. I wanna say that this problem, even though the solution code when I finish it up is gonna look simple, it's actually very, very unintuitive because it's a stack problem and stack problems can be very, very random and vary a lot. Like if you haven't practiced a lot of like pretty difficult stack problems recently, it's probably unlikely that you'd be able to solve a problem like this one. We're gonna uh, make this condition be a loop. We wanna do this also like while the stack is non-empty. So we could do while stack 
and then the current character. Obviously this part of the condition isn't really changing. Now we can finally go ahead and return. You notice that I made the result an array. So when we return it, we actually have to do something like this. We have to combine it into like a single string, passing in the result, and then just joining all those substrings together. That's a bit more efficient than having uh, the result initially be a string and then constantly like concatenating to it. Um, but there's one last thing. I'll get rid of all this stuff up here. There's one last thing about this code right here. What's going to happen on the last case where we're actually out of bounds? Well, in that case, we would definitely want to pop whatever happens to be left over in the stack. But how do we know that we've reached the last iteration? Well, that's pretty easy to do. Just do this. Uh, first of all, wrap this together because we need uh, to guard this second part of the condition with something that comes before it, which is this. If i is equal to the length of pattern, which would be the index that is just out of bounds of it. So if that's true or the second part is true, then we would want to do this code down here. And the way Python and a lot of languages work is if this evaluates to true, this part won't even be executed because if it's an or, well, if one of them's true, the second one doesn't really matter anyway. So uh, that's the entire code. Let's go ahead and run it. Okay, uh, there was actually one thing I forgot to do. When we pop from the stack, recognize that the stack only has numbers on it. So when we pop and append to the result, we do want to actually do the string conversion. I kind of glossed over that, so sorry about that. But this should be the final correct code. Uh, so uh, finally, you can see here on the left that it does work and it is pretty efficient. If you found this helpful, check out Neatcode.io for a lot more. Thanks for watching and I'll see you soon.